Hi, welcome. Today's lesson is on ionic compounds, and specifically we're going to look at sodium chloride, which is everyday table salt. And we're going to look at sodium chloride solubility in water and why it's brittle. So let's look at a visual representation of table salt. So what do these little spheres represent? Well, the green one here represents the chloride ion, and the purple one, go cats, represents the sodium ion. And here we notice that instead of just one sodium and one chloride, we have many of them. Because if you look at a grain of salt, you are not seeing one sodium ion and one chloride ion. You're seeing many stacked next to each other in this big array or this big crystal lattice, all right? And if we look at another picture where it's labeled the sodium and the chloride, we remember that the sodium is charged, has a plus one charge, and chloride has a minus one charge. So not, do they, not only do they alternate sodium and chloride, but it's also alternating positive and negative charges. So why does sodium chloride actually dissolve in water? Well, let's first take a look at water. Here in the corner of the screen is a visual representation of water. The red part represents oxygen and the white or bluish part represents hydrogen. So water is H2O, so two hydrogens and one oxygen. And hopefully you remember from biology that it is a polar molecule, which means poles means it has opposite sides. One side by the hydrogen is positive and one side is negative. And we're going to learn why that is true a little bit later in this unit. But water has two sides, a negative side or a partially negative side and a partially positive side. And this is very important to explain why salt or ionic compounds in general, most of them are soluble in water. So I found this little movie online that had a good explanation, visual explanation, of why salt dissolves in water. So let's play the movie. Here you have a little spoonful of salt this time and we're dropping it in water. And water is called a solvent. That's what you dissolve something into. And let's take a look on the inside. Here we have the water molecules and the oxygen side is attracted to the sodium and the hydrogen side is attracted to the chloride and it starts breaking apart the salt crystal until each of the sodium and the chloride ions are surrounded by water molecules. And that's why you can't see it anymore when it dissolves, because instead of having a big chunk of sodium and chloride, sodium and chloride, and sodium chloride, the water pulls them apart, and you can't see individual sodium and chloride ions. They are too small. So that's why it looks like it all disappears. So let's play that again. So the oxygen side attracts the sodium of the water and the hydrogen side attracts the chloride and the process keeps continuing until all of the salt gets dissolved. I also saw another representation of this online, this little YouTube video about salt dissolving. So there we have, it's different colors this time, but still our sodium and our chloride, our big crystal. And when it's placed in water, our little salt shaker up there, the water molecules, the hydrogen side attracts to the chloride and pulls it away. The oxygen side attracts the sodium and will pull that away. So here we have the red or the oxygen side. It's not really red, but it's pulling that up across. Why is it pulling it? because opposites are attracted together. And here this process continues until it looks like all the salt is disappearing. It's just separating them all out and then you can't see it anymore. So that's why salt or most ionic compounds are soluble in water. The oxygen is attracted to the cation of the ionic crystal and the hydrogen side is attracted to the anion of the crystal and they pull it apart until they're too small to see and that is when they are soluble. 
So what about why are they brittle? So here's the crystal in two dimensions again. We have the green being our core. Oh, they have it they actually marked wrong this time. Here they have it being the positive charge and the purple being the negative charge. But once again, at least it's um, opposite positive and negative charges. So what happens if you apply a force to a crystal, like you hit it with a hammer? So let's watch this YouTube video that I found. And there's our crystals. The negative is next to a positive, which is next to a negative, etc. And let's see what happens when a force is applied. Here's the force. And when I apply it, whoops, let's stop it right there. When I apply the force to the crystal, all of a sudden, instead of being positive, negative, positive, negative, the negatives line up, the positive line up, the negative lines up, the positive lines up. But now, positive and positive repel each other. Instead of being attracted, they repel each other. And this then will split apart because opposites attract, but like charges repel. And this is what happens to our crystal. It's going to all repel each other. There we go. Ions of like charges are aligned. When they're aligned, they repel each other and it splits or splits the crystal structure. And so ionic compounds like salt are very brittle. Force is applied and it breaks apart. So here's just another picture of the salt crystal. Once you have the like charges near each other, then they repel each other and it will break the crystal. So there you have it. So in summary, ionic compounds are soluble in water because the partial charges of water pull apart the ions which are also charged. And why are they brittle? They're brittle because if you hit them, you change the alignment from being positive, negative, positive, negative to two positives together, two negatives together, and other positives together, and like charges repel each other, and so the crystal shatters. So that's why ionic compounds are soluble and brittle. So hope you took good notes, and thanks for listening.